If I had to relearn game development starting from zero today, here's what I would do. For context, hi, I'm Holly. I'm a designer and developer who started making games in quarantine, and now I want to teach you how to make games. So welcome. I'm going to give you six secrets on how to learn game development without losing your mind and without losing your motivation. Because if you do this the hard way, which is what most people do, you can potentially waste years of your time and become so discouraged that you don't want to continue and that's the last thing that we want to happen. But this leads me to a confession. I definitely did it the hard way. Like most game developers starting out, I had this massive, amazing project idea that I wanted to do, and I didn't care if it took me longer as long as I was making progress. But this stunts your growth so much, and I'm going to tell you why. When you start making your dream game as one of your first projects, you're doing your game a big disservice, and here's why. When you're working on your dream project, you're afraid to fail. And when you're afraid to fail so early on into your development journey, you don't have the tools to dig yourself out. And to be even remotely good at game development, you have to fail a lot. Success is not a great teacher, but failure is. How do we take the fear out of something so that you can learn freely and actually have a good time learning game development? make ludicrous games and I mean it. <laughs> this is the exact discipline that taught Simone Gertz how to make robots. She talks about her severe performance anxiety and how making useless robots took the fear out of learning how to make them. And I love this quote, instead of trying to succeed, I was going to try to build things that would fail. So think of the most weird off the wall game concept and make it. If you change the goal from being good to being ludicrous, then the fear is gone. Failing at something ludicrous is almost more valid than succeeding at something ludicrous. But to make this an actionable formula, here's what to do. Take a game concept that already exists, multiply it by something crazy, and then have subsequent fun. What this is going to accomplish is threefold. One, you'll be able to find a starting point with tutorials online. Two, you're going to exercise a boatload of creativity in this process. And three, probably the most important skill, you will learn how to adapt other people's code to your own goals. With this, you're gonna have a really great jumping off point, but concept isn't all that's important. For my first few games, I bit off way more than I could chew. And by the time I was nearing the end of game development, I was too scared to make any changes because I didn't have the proper knowledge and it was way too big to make any changes or alterations now. If I had it to do over again, instead of making one big project a year, I would focus on projects that I could make in two to four weeks time. When you limit yourself to making tiny micro projects, you can experiment, try new things, and have some fun. And if you completely ruin your game, it's just not a big deal. But the best part about this is that when you look back on your year in hindsight, you will be able to see each thing that you learned from each project laid out in a beautiful landscape. But sometimes it's hard to stay motivated when you don't have a true deadline or somebody telling you that you need to get something done. I found that the best way for staying on track with these little projects is to participate in game jams. Itch.io has game jams going on literally all of the time. Some last three days, some last a week, some last a month. A lot of these game jams don't have official winners, but the true winners are the ones that learn something. And let me just tell you, I have been continually impressed by the indie game dev community. You guys are awesome. And I was extremely intimidated coming into this and I just feel we're all in the same boat and we're just trying to help each other. So don't be afraid to participate. Everyone's a really good sport. But aside from small projects and ludicrous games, what do you do when you feel like you're ready for the next step? 
In my opinion, the only true way to learn and to master something is to learn from the best. And sometimes, even though I am on YouTube, <laughs> that's not always on YouTube. And while I highly recommend learning game development on YouTube, it should just be one source of information, not the entire picture. Most tutorials you see on YouTube are going to start with a blank project and walk you through how to do something fairly small. And this is just because of the way that search engines work and the way that people work. If you have a specific question that you want answered, there is going to be an answer on YouTube. But as your project starts getting bigger and scaling, it's very hard to teach how big projects should be set up and structured and evolve. YouTubers can show a slice of game development absolutely beautifully, but the best game developers are the ones that are making assets. You know you're good when you can make money off of your skills. Especially when you're first starting out, there should be absolutely no shame in using assets. Especially when they're so affordable and a lot of times free. I bought Corgi Engine on sale one day for $40 and I can make unlimited games with it. The very next day I spent $70 on a PlayStation game. I know there's this big movement to make everything yourself, sometimes even your own game engine. And while I am guilty of this because that's the beauty of game development, if you have no reference point for what things are supposed to look like, then you're going to flounder for a very long time. I would use assets as much as possible when you're first starting. That goes for smaller assets such as creatures with animations and even for larger assets such as entire game templates. Treat your game like a painting. If you've ever sketched or painted anything, you know that it doesn't come together immediately. It starts with very loose, broad shapes and gradually more details get added in. This is how you should treat game development. Don't go for high fidelity immediately. Start with low fidelity and build your way up. Test your concepts before you invest time in them. On a micro scale, this is instead of adding an entire character with complex animations and particle effects, add a cube. <laughs> Start with a cube. On a macro level, you can use something like Pro Builder to generally shape the outline of your game. And once you get past the initial wireframing stage, you can use assets free or paid as placeholders until you can get your final artwork in there. This is also one of my favorite ways to debug because if you start simple and you build up, you will know the moment that something breaks. If you start with high fidelity, you then have to run down the entire list of what could be wrong. Is it my code? Am I missing a collider? Did I forget to add a rigid body? Did I forget to connect my code to something? Where is gravity? You know, all, you know, all of these things. <laughs> and just remember that coding is a series of mistakes and no one ever becomes immune, so might as well make it easy on yourself. But I truly believe that finding ways to stay encouraged throughout this entire process is the most important thing that you can do. Inspired people make progress and inspired people love to learn. And inspiration can do so much more than any textbook ever could. Which leads me to my next point. Make the type of games that you want to make. If you want to make cozy 2D games, make that. If you want to make 3D first person shooter games, make that. Don't start out learning a discipline that you're not really interested in. Now this might seem kind of obvious, but I started out making 2D games because, hey, I thought since they were made first, they must be easier, right? But I really wanted to spend my time making other things. Not only that, I started out making mobile games because I thought I could make some decent ad revenue off of it, which would propel my journey forward. While well, it was news to me that 2D games were a challenge in and of itself, and the ad revenue that I've made for my mobile games really wasn't even enough to scratch that itch of wanting to make games. 
commit to an engine. I know the idea of a game engine that's low code or no code is very enticing, but having tried several of these myself, I wish I would have just committed to Unity and dug deep in that time that I spent floundering around and looking at other game engines. Because a lot of those other game engines either have paywalls or memberships, and they don't have the entire feature set that you would have like with Unity or Unreal. Regardless of whether you know how to code or not, every single game engine is going to have a learning curve. A lot of times the knowledge in between game engines is not transferable unless you're learning something like C Sharp or C++, unfortunately. Unless that is you're using Unity or Unreal. Since Unreal is in C++ and Unity is in C Sharp, you can take those skills and apply them to any game engine. With Unity, you get access to 100% of the features, millions of tutorials online, their entire code framework for you to use. Unity has written hundreds if not thousands of methods for you to reuse in your game. And since Unity and Unreal are both used by plenty of professional gaming companies, if you do want to break into the industry, every time you use this, you gain relevant experience. But those are all the tips I have for you today. Learn from my mistakes, please. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.